Namaste. We are going to uh, discuss about applied Sanskrit and uh, this is about a summer camp that we are planning to do and uh, what we are going to do is we are going to use Sanskrit and use it in the area of art, astronomy through coding. So what is applied Sanskrit? Sanskrit as a coding language. Now, every new language, when it refers to specifically the coding language, it requires learning new words. Now, what you see on the screen is how a program or a code looks like. And basically, when we start, we start by learning about these words. So these are called keywords, meaning each of these words have a specific meaning. Now, individual coding language words does not add to knowledge base in a traditional coding language. Meaning to say that if I have to know what is auto, what is break, what is case, yes, it gives slightly some knowledge, some knowledge about, you know, uh, programming, but overall, uh, we don't understand, it doesn't add to much of knowledge base. Second thing is domain knowledge is independent of coding language. Now, suppose after learning coding, I need to do something. Uh, suppose that I want to do something in finance. Then finance is a new domain itself and that also needs to be learned. Now, when it comes to Sanskrit, uh, it is not like that. And the reason is because of the structure with which the technical Sanskrit has been created. Now, normal coding, when we learn all of this, it doesn't open gateway to other knowledge systems other than the coding knowledge system or a computer science coding knowledge system. Whereas in Sanskrit coding, it opens multiple gateways. We will as well try to understand why it is so. Now, whenever a uh, Devanagari has to be, a Sanskrit has to be learned, uh, people find difficulty in understanding Devanagari. Now, is there a way of learning it faster? Now, I call it pattern recognition way of learning. Now, what you see on the screen is basically an image created using Parashar. Now, this is Parashar is a Sanskrit programming uh, coding environment. And using this coding environment, we have created this image. Now, what this image shows is, uh, it shows uh, various words, these are the keywords and there are nine directions, Purva, Paschima, Uttara, same is written in English, Dakshina, Ishanya, Agnaya, Nairutya, Vayavya, Madhya. Now what it shows is there are about uh, nine words and each of these words to understand, we will have to learn some alphabets or these Aksharas. Now for example, if I have to read Purva, I need to understand basic two words, per and ver. Let us get into matras later on, but I, this, this represents per and this represents ver. So therefore, there are two words here. Now in Paschima, one may argue that there are three words. Let us not look at half word right now. There are per, ch and ma. But since the per has already been taken, we need to identify two more words. That is full words, ch and ma, so Paschima. When it comes to Uttara, U, T and R, three words. Similarly, Dakshina, three words, Ishanya, three words. And when it goes to Agnaya, the Y has been repeated. Here, N has been repeated and Y has been repeated and we need to re re understand Ru. And here, all the words has already come in the before this. Now, the point is, initially, now, basically, what are these words? Now, these are the words related to the directions. Now, this is the image of a direction, how we look at it. And uh, basically, you can see that initially when you are learning, you need to identify two or three aksharas per word. So each of the word you need to understand, you have to identify additionally two or three aksharas. However, as we progress to couple of words, we will see that each akshara, each word, we need to just learn one more akshara, right? So that means that once you start learning initially, there will be 
uh, you need to identify three words, but eventually you will be able to, without identifying, without learning new Akshara, you will be able to identify word. To an extent that for each Akshara, you may have to learn one additional word. Now, in Sanskrit, what we have is we have unique words for Northeast, Northwest, etc. So in this, you may see NW, SC. So these are called non-atomic words, Southeast. Now here it is an atomic word. Now let us try to continue pattern recognition way of learning. Now once we learn this, again this image has been created by Parashar. This is the logo again created using Parashar coding language. And now what we are going to do is, you will see here that there are about 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3, about 12 words are there. And each of these 12 words, we see that initially when we are learning, we are learning one akshara per word. So mesha, me was already, ma was learned, sh needs to be additionally learned, here bha needs to be additionally learned, etc. Now simha, so and her are not two new words. And what we would see is, as we progress, we are we just need to learn one akshara for two words. What are these words representing? These words are representing the constellations or the zodiac. This is the sun, this is the earth, and these are the stars along the Milky Way. It's the constellations. These are the constellations. Now, is there a way of... Uh, learning this constellation the indic way now what you see on the left is a uh, what we call as visualization now visualization is a new subject in data science where any complex uh, ideas like this needs to be represented in a simple way where we can understand now what you see here is a south indian style of representing the zodiac this is used for uh, doing the Jyotish chart. And once we learn these constellations, we will further learn 27 nakshatras. So here we are just representing the six stars or the asterisms to be specific. And you can see that for every eight words, we need to just identify one akshara. So by this time, you would be able to identify the pattern, recognize each of these words. What are these words representing? Ashwini, Bharani, Kritika, etc. So Ashwini, Bharani, Kritika, etc. is Ashwini in English is called Alpha and Beta Ariates. So this is how the astronomy is. And uh, this is Bharani. Bharani is Beta, part of Triangulum. And uh, in uh, Sanskrit, we call it Ashwini, Bharani, etc. Now, when there are 27 stars, how do we remember? Now, in, 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 in Western astronomy, we will have a list of stars and their uh, distance between them. Whereas, in Sanskrit, what we do is, we start singing a song. For example, Ashwini Bharani Chaiva Kritika Rohini Murgaha Aridra Punar Vasuhu Pushyaha etc. So, this is Ashwini Bharani Chaiva Kritika Rohini Mrugaha Aridra Punar Vasuhu Pushyaha. So, like this, we are going to have a song of 27 nakshatras. So, this song continues for 27 nakshatras. So, now how are we going to define each of these words and how are we going to have a meaning? Now, in Sanskrit, we have something called Nighuntu or Nirukta. So that means that when we are learning Ayurveda, we have to refer to a dictionary which refers to each of these words means a specific thing in Ayurveda. Similarly, if I am trying to re read Tantra, then Tantra, the same word in Ayurveda might be different meaning. Here it might be different meaning. However, uh, there will be um, there will be some relations like you cannot uh, randomly keep assign each uh, word a specific meaning now for example in western science we call it etymology philology and semantics not an exact translation but approximate translation as an example there is a difference between class in c++ versus 
taking a coding class. Both this class means different thing. Anyways, so in Sanskrit coding dictionary that we are going to create, are we going to randomly allocate meaning to each of these words that I have already referred? The answer is no. So when we are using Parashar, we need spatial information. And the spatial information in artwork, what we have taken is whatever the historic spatial attributes of stars or dick, dick, as it has been coming, we are going to use exactly the same meaning here. So we identify one attribute of each word and we are going to use it. For example, Ashwini has multiple meanings and specifically with respect to Nakshatra also it has multiple meanings, but we are going to use only the specific uh, uh, direction or a location of Ashwini as historically it has been used. Now, what is applied Sanskrit? Art, coding and astronomy. What you see here is a calendar that has been created using um, Parashar. And in this, what happens is you are having this Ashadha Masa this chitra, this picture has been created using by Pragati, who is who was seven years and she was in Dubai that time. And this was created using Parashar. The Parashar is the logo. And this is a calendar and this is a representation of Shukla Paksha and Krishna Paksha. What it is, we will try to see in the subsequent slide. This is part of visualization, which is a new subject, part of data science. And what we are doing is we are doing Indic calendar depicting moon phase. Now this is the Krishna Paksha, meaning 14th July to 28th July. This is a representation of the calendar of year 2022. And what this represents is basically something that is shown here. So this is an image of 2022 sky and telescope. And here you can see that what they have represented moon as July 18th is what you see as here 18th, right? So this is the 14th July, 13th July was Guru Purnima. And from Guru Purnima, you have 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Each on the days, like 14 is Thursday, 15 is Friday, like that. 20 is Wednesday. And now 21 is in the inside of petal. Let us try to understand the meaning of that. Here, 14 is the full moon. And as the dates continuously come here, you can see that July 20 is the last is the last date of the outside petal. This represents it's a half moon. And you can see here, July 20, half moon. And then 21, 22, 23, 24, as the dates progress in the inner petal, which represents the smaller the moon, inner the inner petal means smaller moon. You can see here 21, 22. So what they have, what they, this is represented in sky and telescope using an image like this, we are representing it in a calendar because we require the information of the face of the moon in our calendar. Now, this is the applied Sanskrit. Now, we are going to conduct a uh, weekly uh, summer camp in which every uh, three hours, every day three hours, specifically for the US Eastern time zone, we are going to teach this Devanagari using neural network way, the way I have described here, that will be conducted from 9 a.m. to 9.45 a.m. Then we have astronomy using Sanskrit keywords, 10 a.m. to 10.45 a.m. And then we have Sanskrit coding to artwork, which is 11 a.m. to 11.45 a.m. Post that, there will be assignments where you need to learn songs and you can create, start creating images. And we have limited seats. So we have six seats per week. I would be teaching and I would be helped by a computer science professor who is currently working with Shardula AI. And uh, we have the weekly summer online camp starting from July 25, which is Monday till August 26. So it starts from Monday to Friday, three hours, every day, three hours, morning, 9 a.m. to 12 noon for US Eastern time zone. Now, 
to know more about this and to keep in touch, you can subscribe to our Shardula AI for our kids YouTube channel or you can visit our website https shardula-ai.com. Namaste. Dhaniwada.